So I'm going to show you another example of uh, how I organize the low end when I have clashing sounds using sidechain compression. So for this, I'm going to use an example of this track that I made a few years ago. I'm going to show you pretty quick how, how it is. I want you to focus on the, the low end. So for that, I kind of use a continuous baseline, which is something that I, I often use, to be honest. Sometimes I use because I want the baseline to sound like a continuous sound, like straight up. But sometimes I, I put like really uh, low volume below all the other bass lines. So that just gives a body, you know, and uh, you don't like the listener doesn't even notice that it's there. It, it sounds like the same role that a reverb does with like the, the bright frequencies. I think this continuous bass line sometimes it does um, for the bass line section because you cannot really put a reverb in the low end and if you do so you have to cut the low end of the reverb and stay only with the high end so that's not what i what i want sometimes i'm i'm doing uh, a track and i with the kick and the the kick and the bass line it sounds like it's not full enough so i put below the bass line this continuous bass line and then almost non-noticeable and then this kind of makes the sound sound much fuller. But in this case, it's not that. In this case, I'm really, this is the main bass line. And I want it, I want the listener to really hear the, and it even has a pitch shift here. But the problem here is that I have not only the kick drum, but the, but a, a low, a low end tom as well. This tom, we, when used like this in, in house music, it's actually a bass line. It's actually like a pluck bass line, but only the 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 sound of it is a, like a tom, like a, a drum tom, right? But um, but it's actually playing the role of a bass line. So basically here I have three sounds competing for the same, um, the same part of the frequency spectrum. And fortunately the kick and the tom, they don't clash because they never play together. Let me show you. But when you have the continuous bass line, then you have a lot of clashing, of course. So what I do here is kind of the same approach. So first I'm going to, first I'm going to use this this really short sidechain compression emulator just to get rid of the bass line on the most critical part which is in the beginning of the kick drum because in the beginning of the kick drum you have all the frequency frequencies you have the low end and the high end of the kick as well so by that is going to sound pretty much better already This is kind of subtle, but it's not. <laughs> and uh, like the moment where, where you can hear, really hear is like when the bass pitches up, like right here, you can definitely hear a clash between the kick and the, and the bass line. And with the plugin, it's immediately fixed. And Again, now I'm going to do the compression in the low end. Again, putting all the parameters to the most extreme that I can. That, that will leave me with only the threshold to worry about. I'm going to activate the side chain. That means that this plugin is going to be listening for external signals. I'm going for the kick drum, send. 
So I'm going to have the kick drum signal being sent to this specific plugin. I can always go back and forth with this selection of what's the frequency bandwidth I want. And here, the difference is that I'm doing the same for the tom as well. Now let's compare the whole thing with and without both plugins. So sometimes you have a, a subtle difference, but when you add them up, then it's like you, you add a subtle difference with another subtle difference, then it really makes a difference. And again, in the mastering process, in the mixing process, this, this makes a world of a difference. So this is a good scenario of what do I do when I have a lot, lots of elements fighting for the same part of the frequency spectrum.